Welcome to the Advertising Forum. This is episode three of our Agentic Monetization Series, sponsored by Moolah. With us today is Heather Carver, CRO at Freestar. In my opinion, there's no one better than Heather to chat about Publishers Tech Stack. So Heather, thanks for joining us today. Excited to be here. And I love that you're rocking the merch. So thanks for bringing that on board. I am too. You just can't see it. (laughs) But the crown is on. Heather, I want to ask you, from your perspective working at Freestar, we know that data is only as good as the insights you can actually pull from it. That's why it's important to organize that data and make it make sense in a way that drives scale and real impact. So my question to you is, from your point of view, from where you sit, how can publishers make that happen? Yeah, I think uh, AI, sometimes I feel like gets a bad rap right now where obviously there's zero click searches and it's taking traffic away from publisher pages. I also think it's a huge advantage. So, you know, publishers have access to tons of data, whether it's through their SSPs or through their own, uh, you know, data that they collect, but it's kind of useless if it sits in a database and you cannot actually turn that into actionable uh, real-time um, solutions for for your site. So I think there's a great opportunity to take a lot of data off the page, user interactions, um, you know, look at across all your contacts, how your use, uh, content and how all users engage with that content, and then um, be able to take that and apply that to your site. So um, I think one thing, for example, uh, with Moola, you can take their, you know, whole series of, of AI agents that they have and be able to match up uh, certain agents to affiliate offers. You have an LLM to analyze the content and match that with, uh, you know, behavioral uh, aspects of, of how users use your site and match that to content. And I think when you have more, you use this like personalized approach, you can have users engage longer with your site. So longer user sessions, and you can use this, uh, take this AI uh, in real time to actually, um, you know, get users to engage with your site more and bring in other offers like affiliate offers that are more personalized. You know, you get rid of maybe some of those junkier ads that publishers might have, like toe fungus ads or other ads that aren't uh, as nice looking. So enough I think there's of, a, a- Enough of the belly oh, fat, right? It's It's got to go. It's got to go. I know publishers are kind of addicted to that, but I think there's a better way now in this world of AI to harness the power of all the data that publishers have and implement solutions directly on site. Like if traffic is declining directly to your site, how can you actually make more money from the traffic that you do get and make it stickier for users so they want to come back. You increase dwell time. Um, I think those are the that's really the power of being able to use data and AI in real time uh, to create experiences directly on your site. I want to lean into that for just a second because you, you you want the content to be sticky. It's important that we have the data that's available. Dwell time is so important for users that are visiting a site. How do you plan on working with Freestart to layer that into the overall monetization expertise that you guys provide to publishers to drive better results, better dwell time, better monetization. Yeah, so it's interesting. You know, we spend a lot of time with our our publishers, uh, especially in today's day and age. You have to really focus on quality, adds to content ratio. So sometimes you talk about, okay, I'm going to remove this ad unit and maybe replace it with more of a you know e-commerce type widget, or I'm going to replace it with this more personalized unit that can bring in some of your content, uh, affiliate offers, sort of a one-stop shop. Um, and and it's a trade-off, right? Some publishers don't want to remove another ad unit, but it's constant testing and measuring with our publishers. Uh, they may have another type of affiliate offer partner they're working with, and, and they're not able to run a certain unit. But um, I think it's just constantly looking and and strategizing with our publishers about what works for them. Uh, we always look at RPM, like how individual users perform. But if you add a certain unit to the page and the RPS goes down, well, that means publishers are bouncing from the page. They don't like the new user experience. So we always look at RPM and RPS when we test new units and user experiences uh, to make sure that we're not just increasing the value of the users, but also that the user sessions, uh, you know, that, that the um, you know, users coming to the site are actually engaged, which means they will perform better and perform better outcomes for buyers who ultimately are the ones valuing the users and then the user experience. 
So um, I think that that's sort of it, it, it's every publisher is a little bit different, right? A Reuters is going to be different than a pro football reference. And it's important to also understand the needs of the publisher and what's important to them. So I, I love that you you most likely take a consultative approach with your publishers. Why is it so important for publishers to simplify their tech stacks? Yeah, I think one of the things that Freestar really focuses on, um, whether it's through our own tech, which also includes working with best in class third party partners. So partners like Moolah, identity providers and solutions. It is really, really complicated in today's world and publishers are, are resource constrained. And so I think it's important for publishers to um, simplify so they can focus on what I say, we're experts in ad tech so that our publishers can be experts in creating good quality content. Uh, ad tech is, you know, with, with privacy and identity, um, addressability, there's so many headwinds that publishers face today. It's really important for them to either have a consultative partner that they trust or really now, I think, uh, especially with like ads to content ratio and things like that, more uh, less is more, not more is less. Sorry, uh, it, it's it's important to really um, simplify things and not try to work with eighty different partners, which complicates your life. You've got a lot of different contracts, a lot of different things to manage. So um, that's where you know Freestar really likes to come in and make sure that we're helping publishers really simplify. Uh, making sure they're working with the best demand partners, the best third party tech partners, leveraging uh, Freestar's proprietary technology to make their lives easier. So again, they can focus on quality content, um, which is going to be key to an AI driven world. Uh, you know, you can't have this AI slop. It's it, that all the noise is going to be cut out. And so publishers really need to be brands today and really focus on building user experiences. And if you're a publisher chasing short-term revenue and you're slapping a million ads on your page and for a day or two, you make extra money. That That's not a long-term sustainable strategy. You really need to, to simplify and, and work with the partners who are going to um, align with you on a long-term strategy. Heather, you're putting together every single ingredient when you're talking about quality, you're talking about just publishers and ad tech companies doing, doing the right thing. So we don't have slop. Uh, our industry is constantly stirring up more acronym soup, as you and I were joking about earlier today. What exactly is RPS and how does Freestar think about that metric? So RPS, uh, revenue per session, uh, definitely uh, logo sloop, soup here in uh, ad tech world. To me, and, and the way that we look at it at Freestar, that is really a true, a true yield efficiency metric for us. A lot of our algorithms that we use for, you know, dynamic timeouts, dynamic flooring algorithms to help our publishers with yield are focused on RPM. But in everything that we do, we also look at RPS. So we might change a user experience, add a new ad unit uh, or new experience like Moolah to the page. And we can't just focus on, OK, how does that one individual user monetize in time? That's something that we can control with our demand partners and other levers that we have. But we also need to be looking at revenue per session and making sure that the RPM and RPS are both in line with one another. Right. You can increase your uh, RPM, but if your RPS goes down, that means users aren't aren't dwelling longer. They're, they're not as sticky. They're bouncing off your page. So maybe they don't like that toenail fungus ad. It's not as personalized. They think it's ugly. It makes them want to cry and turn off their computer, right? Like I, those are things that when you add a new ad unit, you might have partners that give you a revenue guarantee or do other things. And so uh, publishers might not have the right incentives aligned with user experience to put certain ad experiences on their page. So for us, in everything we do, we always look at, okay, what is RPM? And we use that to kind of tune our algorithms, but we make sure that if we make a change and the RPS goes down, we want to make sure that uh, then we probably want to revert the change, right? If we add, change the user experience and RPS goes down, that means your consumers and, and the users coming to your site are just jumping ship. So you should revert that. So again, they work RPM, so revenue per thousand um, is is the key metric we use. But RPS is really kind of like the the guiding light of where we go when we make any changes or optimizations on our publisher pages. And as we're talking about the guiding light, and here we have Ad Tech God being part of this this wonderful show that we do, 
as publishers are looking for unified solutions, and they're obviously working with companies like Freestar, uh, which also has a great culture, what excites you most about the possibilities when Freestar's monetization engine and Moolah's agentic operating system come together to be able to help all of these publishers do better for the audience, for the consumer, for their own businesses, so on and so forth. This is, uh, you know, what excites me about Moolah is I think, you know, it's truly a complementary tech and we're kind of a, a better together type scenario where it creates a really in, truly intelligent stack. You know, Freestar has got a lot of the monetization capabilities. And then when you bring in Moolah's Agentic OS with multiple agents, um, you get a lot of that deeper insight to um, better monetize the user. So we can take our monetization engine and layer that on top of all of the, um, you know, engagement metrics and, um, you know, use the the publisher's content and other data to extend user sessions and get public uh, users on the site more engaged so that we can monet- better monetize those users. So again, it's like we've got the monetization piece down. And then when you combine that with what Moolah does, it extends those user sessions and we can make publishers more money and make their content stickier. So to me, it's like a perfect marriage of being able to take uh, the monetization and marry that with, you know, kind of real time scalable technology that will extend user session. So it goes back to the notion of like fighting AI with AI. Don't be scared of AI because it's taking clicks away from your site. Um, yeah, well, then, you know, use that AI to better power the user experience on your site and make more from the traffic that you're getting. And hopefully, create a really good personalized experience. You know, again, going back to toenail fungus, belly fat ads. Oh, I was just about to say, you're, here you are making this delicious soup right now and you have to bring in toe fungus. Ooh, Come I'm on. So sorry. So sorry to spoil it for you. Uh, but you create a better user experience. So hopefully then, you know, you get users, you, you're able to build a good brand for yourself and actually build hopefully more organic traffic and bring those users back to your site and not be so reliant on third party traffic from Facebook, from Google search as well. So I think it's a good, good flywheel. Heather, this has been an an awesome episode. Uh, Thank you so much for joining us today on the Agentic Monetization Series. This is episode three. It's sponsored by Moolah. We are excited about what Moolah is doing. We're going to close out the series with the next episode with Josh Markham, the Chief Product Officer of Moolah next week. Uh, Thank you, Heather Carver of Freestar. Thank you, Mula, and thank you, audience, for being with us until the next episode. Thanks, Heather. Thank you so much.